Welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the differences between givens and implicits in Scala 3. So this video will assume that you know the basics of givens and implicits. So see the other videos here at Rock the JVM. I'm going to attach the appropriate links so that you can familiarize yourself, especially with the given clauses in Scala 3. As always, I'll recommend that you follow me in this video, although here we won't have as much code as in the previous videos. But whenever you need to refresh your memory about these concepts or differences that I'm going to talk about, just refer back to this video or to its written form at the blog with the link in the description. So let's go to the code and let's see what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to discuss the differences between the given and using pairs in Scala 3 and the current implicit mechanism, which has drawn some criticism in Scala 2. It's still available in Scala 3 because 95% of uh, real life production Scala code is still using it, but the implicit mechanism will be phased out and replaced with this new given and using pair. So I'm here in uh, the development environment in IntelliJ in a Scala 3 project. Of course, you can create one of these projects yourself by going to File, New Project, and then selecting here Scala on the left if you have the Scala plugin installed. And after that, you can select Dotty, which is currently experimental at the moment of this recording, but it will be flushed out and turned into Scala 3. And after that, you can simply click on Next and follow the rest of the wizard like you would in a natural Scala project. But uh, the goal here is to discuss the differences, mostly the philosophical and practical differences between implicits and given clauses with some code examples. And I'm going to draw some criticism from the implicits mechanism and I'm going to exemplify how the given and using pair solves them in turn. Now, one major criticism of implicits in Scala was mostly related to implicit conversions. So, Implicit conversions now need to be made explicit in Scala 3 with given and using pairs. And uh, this solves a big burden, because prior to Scala 3, implicit conversions were required to add extension methods and to implement the type class pattern, which are powerful functional programming tools. Now with Scala 3, the extension method concept is standalone, and I'm going to release a dedicated video on that. And so we can implement many of the patterns that required implicits without relying on conversions. As such, it is quite likely that we won't need implicit conversions as much. Now, at the same time, implicit conversions are dangerous on their own, and because they used to be so sneaky and easy to write in Scala 2, they're double dangerous, and I'm going to exemplify why. Now, with Scala 3, conversions will be needed to be declared in a specific way. So prior to Scala 3, implicit conversions were very, very easy to write compared to the power that they provided and also their danger. So assuming a class, and I'm going to define a case class person with a name as a string, just a simple wrapper class, and I'm going to define a simple method here, greet as a string, and I'm going to return a simple string, hey, my name is, is name, and uh, Scala rocks. Now, in Scala 2, and also in the first version of Scala 3, we can also write implicits, but they're going to be phased out. And um, the implicit way that we could convert, for example, a string to a person would be to write an implicit method. So I'm going to say implicit def, and I'm going to say string to person, for example, that takes a string as a string and returns a person. And I'm going to simply return a person containing the string as a name. So with one line, we've defined an implicit conversion because after that, I can simply write Alice, like the string, dot greet. And this code would compile just fine. And this is a very trivial example which would make implicit conversions look quite cool. But in production, when you have large code bases, implicit conversions and the ability to simply call methods on some random objects is very hard to debug and extremely hard to pinpoint if they error out. And so implicit conversions with implicit devs are in general discouraged. So they were discouraged prior to Scala 3 and Scala 2, that is, and now they're being phased out and the implicit conversions need to be declared explicit because there are legitimate use cases, but you really need to know what you're doing. So in Scala 3, there are many steps to follow to make sure that we know what we're doing. So an implicit conversion is a given instance of a particular type. So I'm gonna create a given instance. I'm gonna call this string to person. So much like the implicit def, I'm going to, by the way, uh, 
comment the, these two out. So I'm going to say string to person, and the type of this given will be conversion which is a dedicated class here in the Scala standard package. So I'm going to say conversion from string to person. This is basically a wrapper over a function, right? And I'm going to open and close some curly braces. And the only method that I need to implement is an apply method that turns a string into a person. So I'm going to say def apply a string as a string. And I'm going to return person. And I'm going to return person string. So much the same implementation as I used to define earlier for the implicit def. But notice that this structure is a little bit more cumbersome. So quite intuitively, it forces you to quite know what you're doing because you need to implement this conversion type. But we still wouldn't be able to rely on this implicit magic and simply call alice.greet. We also need to specifically import implicit conversions into our scope. So I'm going to say import Scala language implicit conversions. So by this import, you're really serious about what you're doing. So now I can say Alice dot greet. And the code would compile just fine under Scala 3. So there are three big reasons why implicit conversions will probably drop down in use quite significantly. And the first is that the conversions are no longer useful or no longer required for uh, major uh, functional programming patterns. For example, the type class pattern that are used in, in CATS, which by the way, we teach here at Rock the JVM, and uh, so on and so forth. So implicit conversions are not really required. They are required in some legitimate cases, but they're not required for most cases. The second reason is that conversions need to be explicitly declared so that you have these conversion classes that you need to implement. And the third reason is that you need to import the conversions package so that you really, really know what you're doing. And so for these three reasons, the conversions are naturally discouraged in Scala 3 without having some code conventions that people need to be morally obligated to follow. So that was one problem, the implicit conversions problem. I'm also going to show you some syntax ambiguities with implicits. So given solve a sy syntax ambiguity when invoking methods which also have using clauses. So let me have an example for you. I'm going to define a method called get map, which has an implicit value, let's call this size of type int, and this returns a map of string and int. I'm not going to implement this method, it's not really that important. The method takes an implicit argument of type int. Now the problem is that implicit arguments can also be passed explicitly so that we can override whatever implicit value might be in scope. So in theory, we would be able to write get map with the value 43, for example. But if we did have an implicit value in scope, so I'm going to define implicit val, let's call this meaning of life equals 42, which is an int. And uh, I'm going to make this an int. All right, because now in Scala 3, declaring implicits without types is a compiler error. And uh, given this meaning of life, I can still overwrite it by passing the number 43. But I can simply call get map and return this map. So so far so good. But if I use this get map method to return a map or to think that I've returned a map and try to invoke this map on a key like Alice, now, this would be a problem because now I want this argument Alice to be invoked on the returned map returned by the method. So I want the compiler to automatically insert the value 42 here so that I can call Alice here. But now, given the fact that implicit arguments can be overridden by explicit arguments, this is a type error because the compiler thinks that Alice wants to replace this size, which obviously is an int. Alice is a string and now I have an error. So these kinds of compiler ambiguities and syntax ambiguities are present with implicits, not so much with givens. So let me define another get map method, which is equivalent, but takes a using clause. So I'm going to say diff get map to with a using clause. So I'm going to say using size int, and this returns a map string int. 
Again, I don't care about the implementation, just the signature. Now, we cannot really call the method explicitly with an argument, much like we did here with implicits, unless we are also explicit about how we pass this argument. So for example, if I wanted to explicitly override a given value, so I'm gonna say given mol, which is the meaning of life, as int equals 42, then this given will be automatically passed in the using clause. But if I wanted to overwrite that, I would say get map to using another value, for example, using 43. So this is how you would now have to override a implicit value, a given value. So you would have to say using 43, and then you would have to say Alice. But if I wrote get map to without parentheses, and I simply invoke that with Alice, now this is valid code. Now the code doesn't compile because the given value conflicts with the implicit, so I'm going to comment these two out, and uh, notice that the code compiles, so get map to invoked with Alice does exactly as you would expect. You would expect the compiler to automatically inject the extra argument here, which it does. So this is how the given using pair solves these syntax ambiguities. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is how scala 3 given solve the trackdown problem. And uh, what I mean by that is that implicits are infamous in scala 2 for being extremely hard to pin down, especially in large code bases. So that means that in a large chunk of working code, you may be using methods that take implicit arguments, be using implicit conversions or methods that don't belong to the type that you're using, for example, alice.greet, and you still have no idea where they come from. So given's attempt at solving the problem in multiple ways. So first, and I'm going to simply note this down in text here, given instances need to be explicitly imported. And uh, in my recent video here at the Rock the JVM channel, I detailed where we discussed given and using pairs, how given instances can be explicitly imported in three different ways, either importing the particular instance, the importing the given instance of a, a particular type, and importing all the given instances of a particular package or object. And the second argument, which is a little bit more subtle, the given using pair is only used for automatic injection of arguments via a using clause. So in other words, it's only used for implicit parameters. So given and using only solve the problem of implicit parameters. And so tracking down a smaller problem is much easier with given and using because this problem is limited in scope. It doesn't contain all the possible use cases of implicits. For the other implicit magic that's hard to pin down, the other mechanisms including the extension methods and these implicit conversions, which are now much clearer in code, have similar track down capabilities. So it's much easier to track down a conversion when it's explicitly declared declared in your code rather than relying on some implicit magic somewhere that you cannot really find. All right. So this is how given and using solves this track down or pin down problem. Now there is another problem with auto importing. And um, there is a notorious problem with implicits because when you define a method that takes an implicit argument and you want to call it, you might want to automatically find out which implicit arguments you can use for that method. And um, this is a hard one because givens are automatically injected when you have a using clause. You have a pretty similar problem with given and using here as well. So given and using don't quite solve this problem. Right? And uh, IDEs such as Metals or IntelliJ IDEA are going to have quite a bit of a challenge to suggest potential implicit values that you can plug into these using clauses. Now there's something else that I wanted to talk about which is much more subtle and uh, this is the intent behind implicits. So if you look at implicit def such as string to person this would look like a method with the implicit uh, modifier in front of it. But the trouble is that this structure over here that looks 100% like a method was never intended to be a method. These kinds of methods were never intended to be called explicitly. And so there is a discrepancy between the structure of the code and the intention behind that. Now in Scala 3 we have 
three different mechanisms to achieve much of the same results that we used to do with implicit. So we have given and using pairs for implicit arguments and for type existence in the style that I described earlier with type level programming. We have extension methods as standalone. So extension methods are have their first class uh, structure here in the Scala language. So you don't really need implicit conversions to achieve this effect and also the type class pattern. So these two arguments over here with given and using and extension methods will achieve the type class pattern very easily. And finally, implicit conversions are now explicit. And um, this is in the same style that I described earlier. So we can achieve the exact same effects as the old implicit mechanism by breaking it down into its constituent parts. And hopefully the Scala 3 given and using pairs will solve this problem much better. So implicits are powerful and dangerous and also one of the features that makes Scala truly a unique language. Scala 3 moves beyond the implicit mechanism with a much clearer intention of which feature wants to achieve what. Now, the new world with the given using plus the extension methods plus the explicit implicit conversions to include some wordplay here will encounter some pushback from the current developers because of the current familiarity with implicits. But looking a few years into the future, I'm really optimistic that we'll look back to now in 2020. Be really glad we write clear Scala code in 2025 because of this new move with the Scala 3 version here. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, click the like button for me and subscribe. It helps me a lot. And also also comment on the video, I read every single one and I really appreciate your feedback. So in the meantime, follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn, I post fresh updates on upcoming material and check out the links in the description and also check out the Rock the JVM website where we have tons of videos and materials like this. Until next time, I'm Daniel, signing off. Bye.